Well, they was negotiating, obviously, and, and Rex was still in play until they finished it up with Zim. But I like to pat myself on the back from a couple weeks ago, though. Okay, did because you take that? I said that they're they're gonna they need to talk to Zim, I like and that. and uh, I think they picked the right guy. Mm. I think they got the right guy. Rex would have been great too, Skip, but I think in this situation, given the fact that Zim spent 12 years on the sidelines in Dallas, he did okay, defensive back coach, couple years under Dave Campo, and I was like, Campo was the head coach of the Cowboys. He was. Can you believe it? I, I, that was so long ago. God, those are bad years. <laughs> and then he spent four with Bill Parcells. So there's some familiarity there. He understands he the way. Coordinated he, he coordinated yeah. for us. And there's familiarity. He understands Jerry. Jerry understands him. He knows the city. Like, he just knows what being a cowboy is all about. So it works perfect. You got a great offense. Now you got to put your defense together. If you hire Rex Ryan, you're, you're putting, you're becoming aggressive. Gaping cavities and holes wide open in the secondary if, the blitz doesn't come. No, all those sort of things. We had that last year, whether we blitzed or not. But go ahead. But but you now have a coach who is not as aggressive, but it could be aggressive at times. Who's coordinated pretty good defenses right. in in Cincinnati as well as Minnesota. He did. He's not far removed from coaching. You know, he's just a head coach a couple of years ago, so he's still. Fresh. And as he, you kept saying, he was hovering around Dion's program all year in college. Exactly. And yeah. on top of that, you know how we always talked about Dan Quinn waiting to be the next guy? Well, I wouldn't run away from Zim waiting to be the next guy if it don't go well what, with Mike McCarthy either. What, what I would say, I mean, it, yeah, Maybe. It, he, he has been a, a really solid head coach. Minnesota was really yeah. competitive for a number of years. Always had great players, discipline, sound scheme. But I thought, I, I thought near the end for Zimmer, teams found answers for for his scheme. That, that's why in 2020 they were 29th in points allowed, 27th in yards allowed. 2021 they were 24th in points allowed, 30th in yards allowed, mm. because the league is cyclical and. He did a great job early on. If you look at 2019, they were fifth in points allowed mm. and 14th in yards allowed. They figure things out. Right now, it's, it's teams running too high. Hey, keep a cap on the defense. We don't want Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson and, and, and Joe Burrow bombing everybody. We want to make them walk the ball down the field yeah. and game manage. I think it's going to evolve back to cover three and, and guys going back, dropping a safety in the box, not letting people run the ball as successfully as they have. But... I hope that he, he adjusts with the times. And I think that might be a reason they didn't, they didn't hire Rex. Rex hasn't been in the game in a long time. And this scheme is very pressure-centric. It's, it's very he – might, he might drop a D tackle into the deep third and blitz everybody else. You know, he, he, he does a lot of unconventional things. And I think Zimmer runs a very sound scheme, a scheme you can explain, a scheme that has answers for just about everything. You know, it may not be as sound against the run as Irv said yesterday. And rarely are their top 10 and, and run defense, but he's usually right there in points. Usually right there. And I think it's going to be sound. They're going to be good in the red zone. They're going to keep points off the board, even if they give up some leaky yards at times. So I think it could be a good fit, but it's just such a hard situation to walk into because expectations are so high. Mm. And if you're not meeting them, Key, right mm. now, everybody go. Well, of course. I mean, it, but when you talk about his, the end in Minnesota, he didn't have any players. Remember Anthony Barr and those guys, they got to the end. Right. But when those guys was good, when they could play, mm -hmm. they was on, on point. But then at the end, they just didn't have nobody on defense. Mm -hmm. It's fair. All they right. got some people in Dallas. They got some people in Dallas. I saw Dion Saturday in Vegas. He raves about Mike Zimmer. Believes in him. Played for him at one point in Dallas. <clears throat> Even said, boy, I, maybe I should have hired him at Colorado. And I think they had some talks about it. But for me, just to, I'm, I'm speaking as a fan, Mike Zimmer, as sound as he is, and that's the operative word, he is as sound as it gets. He's not exciting to me. He's not charismatic to me. He has no sexy Rexy in him. He has no, it, it's, it's meat and potatoes. It might be filet mignon and Yukon gold potatoes, but it's meat and potatoes. And to me, and I know him, I covered him when he was the DB coach. He can be just as dull as a Tuesday night. Oh, no question. Right? All business. Yeah, all business. Yeah, no smile. And this locker room still lacks a fire starter, an igniter, 
an emotional leadership type personality that I thought Dan Quinn was at times. And yet Dan Quinn's defense, the last time I saw it, gave up not 48 because the final score was 48, but Dak got picked six. So it gave up 41 points to Green Bay in a wild card home playoff game in which they were favored by seven and a half points against the youngest team in the NFL. Well, that's not a great sell for Washington, I thought, or for maybe that's why Seattle said, I don't know. And yet you, you would have liked Dan Quinn yeah, to go back to would, Seattle. And obviously you played for him. But Dan Quinn would put his hat on backwards and he had emotion to him. He had, he had pop to his personality that I, I liked and I'm going to miss <clears> that. And now we don't have any of that on any front because Mike McCarthy is a bump on a sideline log. And Dak has charisma about him. He's, he's a great guy and I think he's well liked. But, but there's something he doesn't have a, an like a fire starting leadership intangible to right. him in the locker room. He's, he's not one who can say the right thing at the right time to lift up the whole locker room into a, a frenzy. I don't know who did that for your I, Legion of Boom teams. It was a number Cam of people. Yeah, was, it was Cam, Cam, Mike Bennett sometimes. Yeah. You, you, you got uh, a lot of times Cam, Bobby at times. And you. Right? And yeah, I would yeah. I'd do my fair share. But I, I think I agree with you. I just wonder what they're going to do with the staff. Because if you keep Al, Al... It's going to be Harris, a great mo yeah. motivator. But I think you have to elevate his role. And I'm surprised. He, he, he was the assistant DB coach, and, and Michael Irvin would come in every Monday just raving about the job that he did with the secondary. Go ahead. Right, because it, it, it's no coincidence that since he's gotten there, you've yeah. seen double-digit picks. You've seen the interception for touchdown uh, record be <laughs> record. broken. You saw you see all the success from these DBs. You do. And I think he deserves a bigger role in this defense, and I thought they would elevate him, maybe not to D.C., but to, to, to assistant like D, D.C., where he would have more impact. Like maybe if Zim's in, a, in the box, then yeah. he's going on the sideline managing because I do think he can be an emotional leader. I think he got, has a lot of respect in that locker room. But I'm, I'm with you because you talk about all these games where you look like the team comes out flat. Flat. And you're like, yeah. They're just not motivated, and he's not a motivator. And yeah. maybe Dan Quinn is the one motivating him at times, and I just don't see anybody motivating him. Well, Zim, Zim just speaks differently, though. He's a, he, like you said, meat potato. He's all football, all business. But inside that locker room, he will be a certain way. Yeah. I can he, promise he's, you that. He's intense. Yeah, I he's very that. intense. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have a problem. If you blow a coverage, come on over here with me. Right. Where some coaches, I, I would say he coaches – somewhat like fear, where guys can play, for, play knowing if I make a mistake, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Opposed to a rah-rah coach. Yeah, that's which, true. Which, yeah. I mean, I think that'll be fine. But okay. I, I, think, I think to Micah Parsons on his podcast point, you just, this generation just doesn't do well with that. They don't do well getting coached under those circumstances, getting coached with fear or, or a stern hand or, yeah. or a, a dictatorship. You've said this many you know, times, yeah. It, it just doesn't go well. That's why a lot of these coaches have adjusted, and they're like, hey, you know, kind of go with the flow. Give, yeah. give some, take some. You know, communicate. To, to Travis Kelsey's point, if that ever happened to Bill Belichick, or you, you never even think about it happening to Bill Belichick because it was such a stern way he ran his team, such a, you knew if I ever did that, I probably wouldn't make it on the bus home. Yeah. Like, you'd be gone before halftime. And so it's just, can he adjust to this new day and age of players not being able to be coached by fear? You tell a guy, you might crash him for the whole game. If you say, you make a mistake, I'm snatching you. And the guy goes out there, he's going to make six mistakes because he's so worried about his job. And these guys just have been mentally fragile yeah. a lot of times. All right, back to Rex Ryan. There's something about Rex that brings energy and intrigue to every situation he steps into because he's great with the media. He right now is the media. He is a quote machine. He's exciting to play for because he's edgy in his approach, but he's very good at what he does. Right. He really can coach hardcore defense because his father was as good as it got. And his twin brother, who I know very well, much better than I know Rex, was very good. I know he had some bad days in Dallas, but, <laughs> but he's been around for a long time. They know defense. Your friend and mine, Dennis Thurman, coached right under Rex for many years, and I've talked to Dennis at length about Rex. They did some numbers on Tom Brady back mm -hmm. in the day. They oh, yeah. did. They made it hard on him because they would take Wex, uh, uh, Wes Welker away from him and just like, oh, he's lost. Right. And – 
once I got excited about that over the weekend, I, I wanted it to happen because Rex was campaigning on live TV on ESPN for this job saying there there are Super Bowl ingredients there. And I think I could be a little bit of an upgrade. He's, he's putting it out there, obviously, over Dan Quinn. And that's a mouthful because Dan Quinn's really good at what he did. But Rex is saying, I think I could be a little bit of an upgrade, and I want to be back on that stage because that's it's a big Look, stage. Look, if, if they had hired Rex, I'd have been jumping yeah. on the table. Yeah. Just like so would for I. Zim. It's, yeah. it's, it would have been a great hire. But this is not a Mike McCarthy hire. Right. This is a Jerry Jones, no Stephen Jones hire. Yeah. Because as I always try to tell y'all, familiarity. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, they know I, I what know they him. Got. I know they what this do. is. Yeah. I don't necessarily know Rex. I coach. His brother worked for me, but I, it wasn't a great experience. Not successful. So That's you, you just, you got to think like they think. And yeah. I, think, I, I think Rex has done a great job in 2009. He had the number one defense in the land, points in yards. They had a great defense. That was the year Arivas had his best year. He did. Um, they, I think they went to the AFC Championship they did. game. The next year, they were sixth in points allowed, third. But it, it's been over a decade since, since he's had those kind of rankings. And you, we, we go outside of scheme because I think scheme, he does a great job. He puts it more on him than the players. He says, hey, I'm going to call the blitz that gets you home instead of, hey, I need you to beat this guy one-on-one. I'm going to call this play to get this stopped instead mm -hmm. of I need you to be a smart player and, and diagnose it and understand this. I'm going to put it on me, which is fine. But then I think personality. Yeah. I think Jerry's like, I'm not going to be outshine. <laughs> if I'm being honest, Keith, no, I'm not going right. to be outshine <laughs> because – Rex Ryan is fun to hear. He's fun to, to interview. Could you imagine him after a huge win or a huge loss? Either way, you're going to hear, be like, what's Rex got to say after this game? <laughs> and I think right now, you hear the Cowboys, you're like, what does Jerry have to say after this game? What is Jerry going to say? What, what is Jerry going to do after yeah. this game? Who is he going to put this on? How is he going to respond? And that will change. Yeah, Rex more than Zimmer to me would be a threat to Mike McCarthy as the next head coach. But to your point, the bigger threat would be to Jerry Jones, and nobody's going to be a threat to Jerry Jones, so it's Mike Zimmer. That's what just happened. Yeah, well, right? I mean, you got to live with it, not me. <sighs> we'll talk about it. <laughs> we will talk about it. Unfortunately. Okay, hold on just a second. The 49ers are favored to win next year's Super Bowl again? How? Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.